With this pack, I tried to go ultralight and get to a sub 10 pound base weight without sacrificing any comfort. That means that I have some gear that is crazy ultralight, but also some gear that's pretty comfortable. Have I been able to find the perfect balance where I'm a happy hiker when on the trail and then super comfortable when I get to camp? Or have I had to make too many sacrifices in order to achieve an ultralight base weight? Starting with the pack that I chose for this trip, this is the Z-Packs Arcall 50. It weighs 715 grams with the hip belt and is insanely feature packed. It has a full frame and hip belt, so it can carry a lot of weight. I've tested up to 40 pounds and it carried that weight, no problem. You also get this trampoline back. So if you're someone who overheats, you're gonna get a little bit more ventilation with this style of back. It also has an adjustable torso so you can dial in the fit so that this pack is carrying weight as comfortably as possible. I have the size medium here and my mom has used this who has a torso that's 14, 15 inches and then my torso is 18 inches. So it fit both of us no problem. And the cherry on top is that I can actually reach and take out and put back my water bottles from the side pockets. I brought two water bottles on this trip, one on each side pocket, and they both have flip caps that I picked up from Garage Drone Gear. I do have bear spray on this trip because I'm in prime grizzly bear habitat, so I have bear spray as well as an ursac. That's bumped my base weight up qu quite a bit, over, over 10 pounds for sure, but I think if you got rid of those, then I'd probably be right around that 10 pound mark. Let's go through the hip belts before we get into the big, big front pocket. On the left hip belt, I just have my snacks as well as keys, and then in the right hip belt, I have my inReach. So I just carry the inReach Mini 2 in order to call for help if I get into an emergency, as well as to check in with Steffi Poo back at home. I'm keeping a lot of stuff in the front pocket here. I have my poop kit bag. This is just in a, in a Space Bear Bags poop emoji bag. I have my Bogler trowel in here. This is an insanely lightweight trowel that has serrated edges so you can cut through roots. I pry rocks off with this, it's awesome. I have soap and then I have my Kulo Clean. So this is what I use in order to clean up my butt. I don't carry toilet paper anymore. I just use this to introduce some water into the back end and then with the soap, give my butt a little bit of a bath after going number two. I have my water filtration kit in here. This is just a platypus quick draw. It's my go-to now. It filters water really fast. It has caps on either end. So when you're on colder trips like him right now, where it's going to drop below freezing overnight, then you can just cap it up, throw it in the bottom of your sleeping bag or quilt and you're good to go. I have a bar of sunscreen because Steffi Poo gets mad at me if I get sunburnt. And then my rain jacket, this is a Z-Pax Virtus rain jacket. This has been the one that I've been reaching for more often than any others for a while now. It's just solid, it works, it keeps the rain off of me and is also a good little wind jacket as well when it's a little bit colder out. And then last but not least, I have my first aid kit which just has a whole bunch of little doodads in it. That wasn't the last, I, I just noticed the, the Swedish cloth that I had sticking out there. So I use this to wipe down my tent if there's a lot of condensation on the inside or if it rained and I have moisture on the outside. I like this a lot more than things like pack towels because it can absorb a whole lot more water, which makes wiping down your tent a lot quicker. On the bottom of the pack, the Arcall has a really nice feature here where you have some loops where you can attach things like a chair. So this is a comfort trip. So I do have a chair. This is the Heelnox Chair Zero. If you're gonna be bringing an ultralight chair, then you can't really go wrong with the Chair Zero. And I have it in this little Hilltop Bags Dyneema Stuff Sack which just makes the whole system a little bit lighter. This video is sponsored by the very first company that ever took a chance on this channel and wanted to support it, and that's Garage Grown Gear. We've been partnered for over two years now, and I wanna celebrate that by talking about some of my favorite unique items that Garage Grown Gear carries. The first one is those flip cap bottle caps that I have on my water bottles. Garage Grown Gear sells those separately for very cheap. Garage Grown Gear carrying the flip caps is not only easier for everybody, but also better for the environment. The second is the Nilo Flume pack liners. I, I'm, I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm still not saying that right. But for me, it's the best way to keep my things dry. Just put everything that I wanna stay dry into the liner, twist it up, and then tuck it down the side. I've had that system out in tons of rain and it's held up great. The third is toothpaste tabs. Toothpaste tabs, like I said, are the best. They're great for traveling. Steph and I are gonna take them on a month long trip to Southeast Asia that we're doing for our honeymoon. But I bring them on pretty much every trip because they're just a whole lot easier than those little toothpaste bottles. I got two more for you. The first one being Luco Tape. Luco Tape is the best thing ever for blisters. If you have hot spots, put Luco Tape on it first. It's gonna stick really nicely. It's gonna prevent that blister from forming and it's gonna stick to your foot for a very long time. I've had this in my first aid kit all the time and I've used it to patch a whole bunch of people up and help them prevent get blisters. The fifth thing is powdered soap. I use this as part of my bidet system. I use it for washing dishes if I need to. I've also used it for taking little sponge baths 
If I am extra dirty, I did that on the Great Divide Trail and it was really nice. Garage Run Gear is the only store where you can get all of these items in one spot. So go check them out, the link's in the video description. Let's dive into the inside of the pack now. So right at the top, I'm gonna have my Diddy bag, just in case I need access to, to any of my Diddies. This is just in a packs little, little bag. And then in there I have my Nightcore power bank. I have my Flextail Zero Pump. So this is a new pump from Flextail. It weighs 58 grams and is super good for inflating your sleeping pads if you want to go ultralight. I have my Rovivon A5 flashlight. I love this little flashlight. It's super lightweight. I think it's just 17 grams, but works really well and charges with USB-C just like all my other items that are in here. I have my InCharge three-in-one cable that's in here. So this cable has a USB-A on one side and then USB-C on the other side. Then you take off the USB-C and you have a lightning slash micro USB. So this can charge tons of different things and it only weighs six grams. So it's a nice ultralight option that's gonna be very versatile. In addition to all my drugs and toothbrush and little things like that, I have my toothpaste tabs. I love toothpaste tabs because I can bring just as many as I need for a trip. And then we have the tent. This is, this is a special tent. Let's get it set up so we can take a closer look. I'll also set up my chair because my, my knees are getting sore. I'm not getting any younger. This tent is the Dursen XMID Pro 2 Plus. So this is a wider, bigger version of the XMID Pro 2. It's 52 inches wide, so you can fit two wide square sleeping pads in there. Steph and I have used this on a trip and we both fit no problem. It felt really roomy. It has a few other small tweaks, but otherwise it's pretty much everything that you know and love about the XMID Pro 2 in a bigger package. The next thing that I have in here are my camp sandals. So these are Mayfly Amago camp sandals. They're very ultralight, but super comfortable. What I love about these is just be able to throw them on around camp and have them outside my tent. So if I need to go pee in the middle of the night, I can throw these on instead of having to throw on potentially wet shoes. Then I have my Ursac. Like I said, we're in bear country, so I am, I am using an Ursac. But in here I have my all my food for the trip. I am still using Rusby bags. These are the little ones that I use for my oatmeal in the morning. And then I have my pink titanium spoon. Because I'm in grizzly bear country, this is gonna be especially important in order to fight off any bears that might try and attack me. And then I have my cook kit. This thing is phenomenal. This is the Tokes 550 milliliter light with a little elastic to keep the lid on. You'll notice that this one doesn't have any handles. And you might be thinking, without handles, how do you pick up the pot when it's hot and pour it into your freeze-dried meal or into whatever you need hot water for? I got a trick for that. So you take off the lid here, and right at the top we have my, my mini Bic lighter, and then we also have a fuel can. So it fits the fuel can in there with all these other items. Then we have my BRS 3000 stove, basically the best ultralight stove that you can get. It works very well unless you're in, in wind, but basically just Find some tree cover, protect it with your back, your backpack or something like that. Wind isn't that big of a deal most of the time. And then I have this little cutie. So this is the Sulik 46 carbon fiber mini pot gripper. So this just fits right onto the pot like that. And then you can lift up a hot pot. You, you can't use this with big pots. The 550, 650 milliliter lights are kind of the max, but it allows you to lift up a hot pot without having to have handles on the pot. So for me, this little pot gripper has been a really nice addition to my kit and it saves me about nine grams. The handles on the pot weigh about 12 grams total and then the little pot gripper only weighs three grams. Right at the top is my down jacket. This is the Decathlon Trek 100 down jacket. It's, it's getting chilly, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this on right now. But this is a great affordable down jacket that's still really lightweight. The Cavalon recently upped the price to $100, but it's still a great deal at that price. Hopefully you're one of those people who listened to my earlier videos and grabbed one at around $60. Then we have the rest of my clothing in this little stuff sack. Well, yeah, not, not really a little stuff sack. This is probably, probably overkill. But this is just all the stuff that I want to stay warm. And I brought a lot because it's going to be getting really cold out. This is a merino wool toque that I wear when I'm sleeping. Mountain hardware air mesh sweater. This is a super lightweight but very warm sweater. And then some comfy fleece socks. I love these for sleeping now because they're super airy but also super warm. And then a decathlon merino wool t-shirt. And then some decathlon merino wool pants. These things are very warm for how lightweight they are. They're, they're impressive. They're one of my top decathlon items. And then I think I also have a merino wool buff in here just to cover up my face if my face starts getting cold at night. Everything else in here is part of my sleep system. 
but I'll show you, I'll show you my sleeping pad before we get it all set up and then take you on a tour. This is the REI Helix sleeping pad. I took it off its case because REI advertises on their website that it weighs 737 grams, but that includes the inflation bag as well as the stuff sack. You take care of that and you save a little bit of weight and drop it down to about 700 grams. This also gives you a good idea of how compact the REI Helix is. It looks kind of bulky in its stuff sack, but once you take it out, it's actually very compact. The pillow that I'm using is the Big Sky Dream Sleeper. It's a super lightweight pillow, weighs 50 grams, and is made just basically a TPU bladder, but it's very comfortable and it has really good height to it. So if you're a side sleeper like I am, then it's gonna be an awesome ultralight option. I made this myself, so it's kind, of, it's kind of like an updated Franken pillow, but the ultralight version. In order to add the pad strap, I used Z-Packs patches with little loops on them. I put one on either side of the pillow and then tied a shot cord, piece of shot cord to it. And I just put this around my sleeping pad and it locks on really nicely. And then the quilt I'm using is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma 20 degree quilt. It's made with 70 near shell fabric and then 950 power fill down. So it's basically as lightweight as you can get for a quilt. This thing is super warm. I use this on the Great Divide Trail the entire time and it's still going strong. Go check out this video if you wanna see the trip where I use this gear list. I take it out on a trip to revisit where a grizzly bear charged me. The grizzly bear got within 10 feet of me and I go through everything that happened that day, what went right and what went wrong.